we got Grambling State the University. We'll start it off, Coach, opening comments, and then we'll take questions. Uh, it's a tough game tonight. We got beat by a better team. Anytime a team beats you three times, we got to concede that they're just a better team. Um, well, they certainly open our eyes up to what we need to do as we move in the off season in terms of <sighs> recruiting. Um, you know, they set that zone back almost at the paint tonight. We had a difficult time getting the ball inside because we don't shoot it that well. So, uh, coach did a f phenomenal job of game planning. <clears throat> uh, they executed. And we had a difficult time stopping them. And I think Ro Romaine or whatever his name is, he's he, he's a man. Uh, he has had 30 points on us twice, 26 once, and I would say he's the difference in the game. Uh, so, you know, our season's over as we <clears throat> continue to try to breathe life into this program and take baby steps into to uh, revitalizing, you know, a program that's been dormant. Uh, I think we did make some strides this year. We certainly were more competitive, and. Uh, you know, if the Lord's will, we'll be back next year, and I, I think things will change a little bit more. All right, questions? Coach Charles Bishop, uh, Dr. Bills <coughs> inside the HBC Sports Lab. Uh, talk about there was a sequence uh, where there was a three-point attempt where they called a foul, and there was a subsequent technical afterwards. How big was that uh, in terms of a turning point? You guys were able to get, get the lead down to one <coughs> when that sequence happened. I'll say that we made significant runs throughout the game where I thought were pivotal times that we needed a stop, that we either made a mental mistake or there was a foul called or whatever that kind of killed our momentum. That one in particular was major uh, because we pretty much, uh, I thought, were right there in control of the game and being in control of that game we ended up, I mean, it was five points, and, the, and, 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 you know, we had a difficult time getting back from that. So, um, you know, but that, that's what good teams do. Good teams figure out how to sustain other teams' runs. They did that tonight pretty well and, um, you know, were able to, to, to stay alive and, and, and keep playing. Coach Mike Prince with the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and I noticed you said that you're revitalizing a program what positives are you taking out of this season and what missing pieces would you need to help you get that journey? Yeah, that's a great question, man. We 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 have lost prior to tonight. To, tonight's loss of 14 points is our largest deficit in over a month of some change. All right. To my calculation this season, we've lost 11 games by seven points or less. We've lost seven of those games by three points or less. And, um, you know, winning is the objective. But we... I don't think anybody in the league wanted to see us. You know, I think we were as close to the bottom. We were on the bottom, but we were just as close to the top. We've played everybody close. And so the majority of our, our team is coming back uh, prospectively. Um, we will address our needs of scoring the basketball. The night we got down 20 to 3 early, <clears throat> we have to address the issue of sh being able to shoot the basketball, score the ball at, at, at a high rate. And, and, you know, I think the players that we'll bring back will be better for, for this year. I mean, uh, Nigel Barrow was in high school last year. All right, he, he's the guy that got the technical foul tonight. He's got to learn from that. Um, you know, we've got guys that are that are, are just beginning, I think, to play good ball. Irvin Mitchell's just starting to play good ball towards the end of the year. Uh, so uh, I think as, as our opponents look at our roster uh, in the upcoming year and see the, the players that we have that will prospectively return, as we'll go out and address our recruiting needs, um, I would expect us next year definitely not to finish in last place. That was our goal this year. We didn't meet it. But uh, I, I would not expect us to, for Grambling to see last place again. Coach, <coughs> Coach Walsh, Walker, uh, Van Petaway, uh, <coughs> with Nigel being the freshman of the year, a lot of people would have expected him to, to have been in the starting lineup. Um, has he started most of the year? And it was a decision made not to start tonight. Well, Nigel has been a part-time starter all year. Um, over the last 10 or 11 games, Nigel's been coming off the bench. Um, but he plays starter minutes. All right, so tonight he didn't start the game, but he played 29 minutes. That's kind of normally the way it goes. Um, what I like to do for Nigel is, is you know, N Nigel, as, his, as he develops, 
Um, it's going to really, really need to mature. And he needs to see the game a little bit before he steps out there. Um, he was a great player in high school, averaged 24 points a game, was the um, MVP of his league. You know, he, he has came in with a big-time reputation, and he has to get used to people cutting him off now. He has to get used to not being able to, to just get open when he wants to be open. He has to get used to being able to share the ball and see other people. Um, and so you know, as, as, as good of a player as he is, he has a long learning curve, and, uh, you know, we need to – to move him along relatively slowly, which is what I think we did, but he had also a lot of responsibility. Any questions for the players now? If, if you had to, if you had to put in the words um, this season, what could you have improved on? As a player, or as just a player, as a team. As a player, I think I would have uh, just been smarter. A lot of things I could have just been smarter, just making better decisions and just playing as a person. But I, just, I became better and better, I feel like, from last year. But it's just was decision making and just being smart. Any more questions? Stay and then we'll take questions. All right. Um, I'm, I'm proud of my guys. They um, came here today and they stayed focused throughout last night. And uh, they came on the floor and displayed the type of basketball that we like to play at Valley. Uh, we made some adjustments and they bought into what I was asking them to do. And uh, the, adjust, the adjustments paid off for us. Questions? Coach Payne, uh, congratulations on your win, first of all. Mike Prince with open mic on the prairie view. Um, you guys played some very intense uh, defense on today, and it seemed like they were amped up. Uh, from the last time that I personally watched you play against Prairie View, what is it that you implemented, and, and how did you get them to buy into it? Well, our style this year has basically been um, d uh, play tough defense. Uh, we went to we played a lot of uh, zone today more so than our pressure defense because we figured that, you know, Grambling wasn't a great shooting team, you know. And so we, we had been preaching that since the drive from UAPB to here. That's not a long, that's a long drive, in, but that's not a long drive to make the adjustment, but they made it mentally and um, they bought into it because uh, I think we started maybe three to four people that we traditionally don't start. And that's the one thing about a team. When you buy into it, no matter what defense you play, as long as all five are playing the same way, you're just fine. Coach Charles Bishop, Dr. Bills, inside the HBCU Sports Lab. Talk a little bit about the play of uh, Marcus Romain, uh, 8 of 12, uh, 32 points tonight. Uh, you guys got off to a very quick start and it seemed to set the tone for the game. Uh, well, Marcus Romain, he's, he's definitely our go-to guy. I think everybody in the conference know that. Uh, he stepped up big for us uh, today. Um, I looked him in the eye last night. He and I had one-on-one -on -one conversation, and I said, you have to come in with that dominant instinct today. Uh, his last few games, he's, you know, kind of took the back seat into the second half. I said, hey, baby, you can't take the back seat. It's one and done here. So I'm proud of what he's done. I'm proud that he, you know, listened to what I said. And, um, hey, he's a scorer. He can score with the best of them. I'm Van Petaway. Mr. Romain. Was today a statement game? I mean, it was. I just wanted to go out and get that win for the team. 
I mean, I, I was convinced with, um, you know, what took what transpired before. You know, I wasn't worried about it. All I was focused on was getting the win and moving on in the tournament. Because if it was a statement game, point well taken. Yeah. <laughs> the coaches in the league uh, failed to put you on the all-conference team yeah. or newcomer of the year. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's how you make a statement. Yeah. This, is, this is a good, good student athlete right here. And he's trying to be modest in what he said. But he shared with me. He, he said, hey, coach, they left me off. I said, that's all right, though. They're not going to leave you out at the end of the day of the, in the tournament. And so I'm proud that he came out and, and made that statement. But he got to make it tomorrow, whenever, whenever, and so on. Love. 21 points. And personally, I, I love how you work down in the paint. Uh, I want you to explain how you come up with your free throw <laughs> method with that half cock shot. Uh, that's just like my natural position. That's how. That's just how I really shoot. Like, like during the games, I don't shoot that many jumpers because I'm always in the paint. <clears throat> but you know, that's just that's how my feet is when I shoot. So that's, I, I, I don't know why. I just shot like that ever since I was young. And don't it, change it. Yeah, you're yeah, them. yeah. <laughs> just wondered what the. Uh, uh, habit or just an instinct, it's just the way you shoot? I think uh, in high school, I, I had broke my leg. And before I had surgery, it was like crooked to the left. So I always had that natural instinct to shoot that way. But I just got, I got it fixed before I came to college. So I think that's the main reason why I shoot like that, honestly. Strong game. Thank you. Now, Mr. Love, this is probably my fourth time watching you play. And I would have to say today is the first time I've actually saw you really on the paint. I mean, you've played well in some of the other games, but to me, you were a big key because you dominated the paint. Do you feel that you were trying to make a statement? Yes, for sure. <laughs> yes, I was. I feel like uh, I feel like I haven't shown my fullest potential throughout this whole season. And as a senior and as one of the leaders on the team, I feel like I owe these guys the benefit of the doubt of trying to win this tournament and, you know, representing the school. So I'm I'm just trying to go as hard as I can, make make the best out of the situation. Right. And Coach Payne, yesterday when in the uh, interviews during the uh, uh, – before practice, you said that you always keep something up your sleeve. Yeah, you you want to try a new wrinkle. Was – today was that the zone? It, it was. It, it was. Uh, we, we just played Grambling win, I think, couple Mondays ago and we pretty much played pressure defense the whole entire game and um, so we wanted to be we wanted to do something different something that wasn't expected I always try to prepare my team to be able to do anything because the game is not going to always go the way you want it to go you have to make adjustments and and, and that's the way it is I mean uh, these guys the biggest thing I think for us was the mental adjustment they made you know Isaac Williams uh, he came out and shot the ball lights out until he got in foul trouble. And I looked him in his eye last night. I said, son, you got to make shots. Simple as that. And he came out tonight and made shots. And all these guys, we talked with all three of them. And so I, I'm just proud. And that, that was the wrinkle that we had. Coach, I, you've talked about dealing with adversities. You really hadn't played a real home game in what, three years now. Well, Valley hadn't, but I haven't, yeah. Right, so in about three mm -hmm. years, um, how uh, uh, mental strain is it for you to have to deal with, with the many adverses? Even though, and I, and I tip my head, you never make excuses or complain about it, but internally it has to be something that eats away at you. You know, the biggest, the biggest, it, well, what I'm trying to get the athletes not to worry about what, we don't have a where we got to play. That's the biggest thing. Me, I'm just fine. Give me a court, give me a rim. As long as I can look, come out my office every day and see that big old pretty gym ready to open, I'm just fine. That's the biggest thing with them. I think we were practicing yesterday and the guy seen the shooting gun. And I told him, I said, they was like, Coach, we need, I said, what we need a shooting gun for? You shoot and get your own rebound. That's when you become a better shooter. <laughs> see, I, I come from the old school. All I know is work hard and get it done. No excuses, no exception. Any more questions?
One last question, Coach Payne. Grandma was able to get back in the game by trapping and pressing and whatnot, and they created quite a few turnovers. Is that a concern going forward? Big concern. It was a big concern coming in here. I and my staff have to do a better job because that's been a nemesis on us uh, our entire year. You, if uh, we played about six games in this whack where we lost the ball game at the end, a tip in at the buzzer, a three point shot at the buzzer, a free throw at the buzzer, I mean, a free throw at the end. So we, I think we had them prepared enough to shake it off, but we got to get them prepared enough to not even let it happen, you know? And uh, so we're going to do tonight some good chalk talk and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Thanks, guys. Appreciate All right, it. thank you.